Celebration Center. Good morning, Celebration Center for Spiritual Living. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. There are people here in the room. Holy cow. I don't even know what to do with that. It's kind of amazing, really. Um, so I know the majority of y'all are still at home this Sunday. We invited just a couple of people, our leadership council. Uh, Harrison is here with Stephanie. We have Terry Murphy here, Irina Hirschevitz, and uh, Chet Hall. And then, of course, Ivor is running our sound in the back. And I think a couple more people might be stepping in a couple minutes late because, you know, that's what we like to do on Sunday mornings. So it is so lovely and wonderful. This is our, this is our test. These are my guinea pigs to see if I can get through a service without yelling to the back of the room at Ivor or doing that with my microphone or, uh, and I guess I can take my mask off. See, there's all kinds of stuff. So these are my guinea pigs today. We're going to figure it out together. Uh, so welcome. I'm so glad that you're all here. And I don't know that I have anything to tell y'all. Usually I have lots to say at this time, but next week is our return to in-person services. Um, and if you haven't heard about that or you haven't seen our letter about that, we're going to be telling you more at the end of the service and our announcements. And we also have a letter that we've sent out to everyone. So if you are interested in learning more about that, feel, feel, feel free to drop your email into the chat and we will get that information to you. And so without further ado, it has been especially as we, as we move into this time of returning to Height Hall and figuring out what that looks like and figuring out what it's like to talk to people in the room and talk to the camera and um, make sure that we're including our entire, entire global community. What has become so apparent to me is the need to maintain holding the vision of our community throughout this time. Every single question that we ask, every single decision that we make, everything is weighed against this vision that we say together every week. And so I invite everyone to say our vision along with me. No? <laughs> In just a moment. Uh, downloads? <laughs> we can, we can, Terry says we can do it as a quiz. Possibly. All right, well, we'll just quiz me. So I'm going to tell y'all our vision. Our vision is celebrating spirit within and knowing the oneness of humanity. Celebrating spirit within and knowing the oneness of humanity. And that is truly what we are doing here today. And one of the ways that we are doing that is with our music. We are so blessed and excited to have a guest musician. I'm going to tell you all a little bit more about her in a few minutes. But for now, I would like to welcome Tapora Belazikian for our opening song. Good morning, beautiful people. I've missed you. <laughs> This is a gorgeous song by um, Karen Drucker and Michael, Michael Gottlieb, and it is called There's Only Love, and of course, sing with me, wherever you are. In this moment, in this place. Letting fear and worry fall away from me. I open my eyes and see there is only love. There is only love. Love that heals, love that sets us free. There is only It seems I've lost my way when I go inside and quiet my mind. I can hear spirit gently say, 
Thank you so much, Sapora. That was absolutely beautiful. Hmm. And so now I would like to invite Irina Kurashevich. She is one of our licensed practitioners here to the front for um, some inspiration, a reading, and a prayer. Good morning, everyone. As you know, we have practitioner core. And according to Ernest Holmes, everyone who practices science of mind is a practitioner. So we all are. The practitioner core, though, took lots of classes and was trained to pray for other people. And that is what we do. Please let us to pray with you. Give us that chance to pray with you and send us your prayer request. You can submit it through the website. Later, it will be shown to you how to do that. There are several ways. And you always can contact practitioners or our minister, Reverend Chris, and submit your prayer request or to ask for a prayer session. It is always interesting how different practitioners choose their readings. So I was looking through Ernest Holmes, what he would give me, and nothing was resonating with what was Reverend Chris uh, talking about in her uh, short videos that she posts every week on Facebook. So I hope you watch it like I do. And suddenly, you know, this uh, Deepak Chopra's book grabbed my attention on, on the bookshelf, and I just opened it. That's sometimes I like to do that. And that I guess that works. Uh, the book name is The Seven Spiritual Laws of Success, A Practical Guide to the Fulfillment of Your Dreams. So the law number six, the law of detachment. In detachment lies the wisdom of uncertainty. In the wisdom of uncertainty lies the wisdom from our past, from the known, which is the prison of past conditioning. And in our willingness to step into the unknown, the field of all possibilities, we surrender ourselves to the creative mind that orchestrates the dance of the universe. And I invite you to pray. From my heart and from my soul, I know that God is all there is. I recognize that there is only one one power, one love, one joy, one peace. There is nothing else but God. There is no God and. God is. God is life. Life is God. And from this powerful recognition of oneness, of one power, I declare that I am. I am one and inseparable of that with that power i am all that god is here and now and forever and from my oneness i recognize the oneness of all i know that everyone in this room in this zoom room and beyond is one and inseparable from the divine that power flows within every, every one. And as I belong to God, everyone belongs to God, to that power, which is so much greater that everyone here, and it is always on our side as there is no other side. There is only side of God. And 
and from recognizing my oneness. I speak the word of truth, knowing that I am looking forward always in God, in spirit. I know that everyone here is divinely supported in their dreams, in their vision. And I know, I know success for that vision. I know that amazing outcome of the vision for everyone. I know prosperity. I know perfect relationship. I know love. I know peace. I know harmony. I know perfect and radiant health. I know wholeness. And I invite us all to keep those people who are in sorrow today, who are mourning today. I invite us all to hold them in prayer. I invite us all to take people of Florida in our hearts. And no love for those who lost their loved ones, who lost their homes. And I know that love prevails, that life prevails. Wholeness, peace, harmony, that's what I affirm for everyone. And I'm grateful. I'm grateful to know this philosophy. I'm grateful to know this truth. I'm grateful to know oneness of God. I'm grateful, grateful to know that there is one power, one source, one source of everything, abundant and joyful. And from this deep, deep gratitude, I just let it be. I release my words into the law, knowing that I are done in the perfect mind of God. And mine is just simply know it and celebrate it. And I do it. And so it is. Thank you so much, Irina. And now I would like to invite Tapora back. This is a beautiful song that you probably, saw, most of you know from, from actually from the 60s. Um, and this is an acoustic version about um, all of the elements of life and how they all belong. And just being in that space of surrender to everything turn 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 there is a season turn 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 and a time for every purpose under heaven a time to be born a time to die a time to plant, a time to reap, a time to kill, time to heal, a time to laugh, a time to weep. <coughs> to everything turn, 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 there is a season turn, 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 and a time to build, a time to break down, a time to dance, time to mourn, <coughs> a time to cast away the stones, a time to gather the stones together, to everything turn, 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 there is a season 
Oh my goodness, we can clap. <laughs> oh, am I on, Ivor? Yeah, yeah, can y'all hear me? Yeah, oh, okay, hello. <laughs> oh, that was beautiful, Tapora, and we just had this moment where we clapped instead of, <laughs> instead of doing this. Yay. Yay, that was my first clapping in 15 months, yay. <laughs> Oh, so I want to tell you all a little more about Tapora. Um, she was formally trained in composition, piano, and songwriting at Oberlin and Peabody Conservatories, which if you aren't in the music world, those are both big deal conservatories, as well as in Townsend State's jazz program. She was raised in a musical family <laughs> with an oboe-toting, guitar-picking mom and the music of the 60s and 70s to feed her soul, and we just heard that, obviously. Um, she blends all of these fusions of, of the musical influences of her childhood um, to breathe originality and life into her body of spiritually centered compositions and songs under the moniker Love Rising, which I think is extra interesting because next week our theme, our return to in-person service theme is Rising as Love. And so how perfect is it that's, that Tapora is being pulled by the vision? She didn't even know that that's what the vision was but she was being pulled by that or she is being pulled by that and her newest project is with a music licensing agency out of LA where she is building a film and or a career in the TV film and ad world so thank you so much for being here with us Tapora it's lovely to have you and today pushed by pain or pulled by vision it's a uh, it's funny, right, that we that we have these themes that were come up with over a well about a year ago. They actually just released the 2022 global themes in this month's Science of Mind magazine. And I know that they I have friends who are on that team that develop and put these themes and these um, these outlines together. And I know they have been working on it for months. So for over a year ago. The topics for the month of June were come up with and how perfect is this theme and it was actually originally just pushed by pain and I added the pulled by vision. Um, <laughs> uh, because that is next month's whole theme is pulled by vision, the monthly theme for July and I wanted to talk about both because I think both is kind of where it's at right. So. It is so interesting to have y'all here. <laughs> I have to tell y'all, I was up, I was up at 2 a.m. this morning. That is what time I woke up. Uh, could not sleep for anything. And I was very tired yesterday. I had a long day yesterday, a good day, but a long day. And um, went to bed at, I don't know, 1030 or something up wide awake, two o'clock, finally gave up at three and just got up and started working. And I've kind of been working since then. So um, I there was just there felt like so much kind of possibility in this day our re our return is next sunday officially but have just having people in the room is just really magical and with the exception of Ivor, who's been my tech person for the last six months and janine who's heard me speak just a couple of times in that um, when i was here in november in person she was here and then a couple of other times other than that i've never been in the room with y'all for a for a uh, Sunday service, so it feels, it feels different, it feels some sort of way. <laughs> and I'm so happy to be here because it's so obviously clear that we are being pulled by vision. And, and this pulling in this community in Celebration Center for Spiritual Living, this pulling started back in March of 2020. Because while other ministers, and I know, you know, I was a ministerial intern, and I know that we were out there going, what is happening? Like, are we going to have to shut down? Like, what is happening? And, you know, we're looking around, and ministers are scrambling, and everybody's trying to put together. Meanwhile, here at Celebration Center, um, Reverend Faith had retired, and this community stepped together and said, 
there's something that is calling us here. We are being pulled by a vision to a different expression of Sunday services, and they actually, y'all actually, uh, I wasn't here, but y'all actually shut down church and went online onto Zoom a week earlier <laughs> than was mandated by the state. And I don't know any other center or church, maybe there were some, but I don't know any other center or church that made that decision by being pulled into the vision instead of being pushed by the state of pain, you know? And so when I look at that, and when I look at this kind of evolution, I put in my application to candidate sh shortly after, and then, you know, most of my candidating was done online. I just look at this vision that this community has had throughout, and the blessing that I have to be here with a community of people that it's so clear that the vision is so clear, so clear. And sometimes it's a both and, right? Sometimes, yes, we are being pulled by the vision, but first we're being pushed by pain, or sometimes it seems like everything's happening so fast that we see the vision, but before we can quite get to being pulled, we're being dragged along or pushed along. And we have, to, we have to figure that out and we have to navigate that. And it's really nice if we can look at this idea of pain, if we can look at that as information instead of a suffering or something that we wanna get rid of or, or detach from. Instead, can we look at our pain? Can we look at this discomfort that we may be experiencing and instead of judging it as wrong or bad or something that we need to get rid of, can we instead go, what are you telling me here? What is seeking, what is being called for in me? What is seeking to be expressed? What is this thing that is pushing me? And where is the vision that I can step up into, that I can go forward into? How can I move from being pushed by this pain to being pulled into the vision? Michael Beckwith says, pain pushes until the vision pulls. And I believe that that is where the original pushed by pain, pulled by vision, I believe that's where that came from was Michael Beckwith. Pain pushes until the vision pulls. And he talked about this in a little snippet on Super Soul Sunday. Shout out to Diane Preston, because I know you're probably watching that right now. And further in that snippet, he says, potential is always bigger than the problem always potential is always bigger than the problem and what's interesting to me this idea of potential because you know we say limitless possibilities infinite potentiality we have these big grandiose words i'm just realized i don't actually need that there I can move it out of the way uh <laughs> limitless possibilities and grand potentiality and all of this stuff. And then I get into the nitty gritty, gritty of it and included in limitless is things not working out. Including in, included in limitless is this thing that to me, I would judge as failure. When I'm looking at my vision and where I'm being pulled to, sometimes I have to open so big because it's not until I truly open to every potentiality and every possibility and step in and truly go, I don't know what spirit's calling me to. I don't know what's happening here, but I'm willing. I'm willing to take the leap and to surrender and to trust that even if my finite human mind deems this thing as a failure, that somehow that was still calling me to this higher vision, that something bigger is being revealed. And I know I keep saying that to Ivor. I keep saying, we're going to get through this as we've been working and, and doing all of the tech switching and figuring everything out. I just, I keep, and I say it to myself, I've said it to friends. I say, okay, we're going to get through this. Like time is going to keep on ticking, right? Like Sundays are going to happen and we're either going to get through them and we're going to be like, holy cow, that was amazing. Like we rocked it. All the technology worked. Everything went so smooth. Holy cow, we're so awesome. Or we're going to get to the other side of it and we're going to be like, wow, that was a disaster. Glad we don't have to do that Sunday again. 
good thing the bar is real low so that next Sunday when it's better, everybody will be so impressed, right? But either way, either way, what we believe is that there's only one mind, there's only one thing going on. And so regardless of which one of those things occur, and today so far, everything's going delightfully smooth outside of me running back and forth a couple of times at the beginning of service and everybody looking at me like, do you run around every Sunday? Yes, yes, I do. Uh, <laughs> other than that, everything's going smooth and who knows what's going to happen next week, you know? Who knows? But either way, well, and God knows, but either way, regardless of what happens, all of it is calling us into our vision. All of it is this community stepping up and saying yes to celebrating spirit within and knowing the oneness of humanity. And that is what we are doing always, always, always. Anais Nen, I... I put this quote into my talk at 3 a.m. and completely forgot about it and was looking through it again this morning at, at 9 and or 9 or 9.30 and I was like, oh, wow, that's really good. Anais Nen said, perfection is static and I am full of progress. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, think about that for a second. Perfection is static and I am full of progress. And so we, we strive for perfection. It's like built into our societal mindset. You wanna get the A, you wanna be the best, you wanna, you, know, you wanna fulfill the purpose and have the dream and this and that and the other. You want your microphone to work, you know? But is that really what we want? Because when we look at the things that we deem perfect, it's things like the Statue of David, static, the Mona Lisa, it's static. There's not, there's not a movement and a flow and a calling and an and a ebbing and an and a essence. And that's not who we are. Yes, we are works of art, but we are not striving to be static perfection. Instead, we are striving towards that potentiality and towards that possibility and towards being with one another and in community in a different way, in a, in a higher way, in a way that we've never been before. So I was laughing because in my 20s, I can't even tell you just a specific, like when I was 22, because I did it multiple times. But my, my process would be, you know, I'd get my life going along pretty, pretty good, and things would be like happening, and I would enjoy some stuff, and then I'd get bored, or like something would stop working so right, or, you know, something would happen, or something would make me mad. And I would just, I would get fed up and I would blow the whole thing up, just blow it up in all kinds of spectacular, creative, manifesto <laughs> ways. I learned the law of attraction when I was 18. So I knew that I was in charge of my reality. I knew that I was co-creating with the divine. I knew that my thinking created what was happening. And I still, for some reason, decided to have this pattern over and over and over. As, as soon as things started to get good, I'd blow it all up. And then I would like go through and I would like pick through the rubble and I'd be like, well, here's a diamonds. Let's see if we can like make that work again. And it wouldn't because it wouldn't fit into this new framework. And then eventually, uh, when I was about 26, 27, I kind of got tired of that. Like, it's really exhausting to have to blow your whole life up and reinvent everything, right? It's, it's kind of exhausting for every year or two for like the job to fall through and the house to fall through and the car to get, you know, totaled and all of a sudden you're like, that's, that's a little exhausting. But that, that time of my life, I feel like was me being pushed by pain. Like, yes, I was blowing up my life. Yes, I had these old belief systems that were, that were causing me to think that, you know, this was a good idea. This was the way to do it, right? And what was really happening was that I was being called into something greater, 
in every moment, every iteration of what I created was like next level. And every time it's now that we have Facebook memories, I go through my Facebook memories every day because I think it's just hilarious. I have had Facebook since 2004. I have had my Facebook page. So I have 17 years of watching me <laughs> live through the world. And it's funny to watch, like I can see in certain years, like everything's horrible. And then like the year, you know, go down a year, my life is so amazing. And then like the year before, you know, oh, like every day. And, and so it's, it's interesting to watch these patterns that I, that I went through in my life. And what I really see now is that I didn't have the awareness to understand that I was being cold to a vision. And since I wasn't conscious of that, life was dragging me along a little bit and saying, come on, come on, there's something greater for you here. There's something calling you. Something is happening, right? And then I hit 26, 27, somewhere in there, and I was like, maybe like when I get unhappy in my job, I don't also have to get into giant fights with all of my friends and like stop hanging out with all of them. Or maybe when, uh, you know, my housing situation isn't good or my neighbor's playing music too loud, I don't have to stop paying my rent and get evicted, but instead I could, you know, talk to somebody or have a conversation or, um, you know, move to a different place and, you know, have a, have a reference. A reference what is that right and then slowly I started beginning to create my life by block by block rather than a whole structure that was built in on itself so that then when a block wasn't working like Jane guy could just take that one block out and replace it with a stronger block that works and I began to see that that was me being pulled to this vision, was me building this building, this block, block by block. And now here we are a decade later, just under a decade later, and I look around at my life and I am constantly in awe of what I have created and what spirit has put, and it's not just me, my goodness, what I have co-created with spirit, what, what has emerged when I surrendered into that greater possibility and I surrendered into the, the vision that was pulling me. I also, I've lived all over the country, right? So I lived in Houston for a while and then I moved back to Asheville. And that move was very much of a being pushed by pain. I was unhappy in Houston. I had blown up my life once again. And I wanted, you know, I did want my son to be raised in nature and around all the trees and the mountains and, um, you know, playing in the dirt and all of that. And you don't, there's not a lot of trees, mountain and dirt in Houston, Texas. There just isn't. You have to kind of drive a long way to get any of that. And so it was very, but it was very much a, I just, I can't, I can't be here anymore. And so in that push by pain, I moved to North Carolina and it was a good move and it did a lot of good things for me. And it was challenging in a lot of ways. And then my next move was from North Carolina to Napa. And that was so pulled by vision. It was so pulled by vision. I had an idea I was gonna go to ministerial school. I was going to, um, become a minister. And that had been my single-minded vision for a while. And so I'd started to let go of everything that wasn't serving me. And when I initially said, I'm going to move to California and I'm going to go to ministerial school, I had no clue how I was going to do that. No clue. And I just threw my stuff in my car. I left Jen, my partner at the time, all of our animals, all of my, you know, anything bigger than an article of clothing or an altar item at home. And I just got in the car and I drove. And y'all have heard the majority of this story before, but it just worked out miracle after miracle after miracle. And I took the time, I took about two weeks to drive across the country and multiple times I would be so blown away. I had never driven cross country before. I had never driven more than four hours by myself. And then I drove all the way North Carolina to California. And I, and I would just, I would just be in awe. I would have to pull over on the side of the freeway because it was so stunningly beautiful, these parts of the country that I had never experienced before. And I was just in awe. 
And then miracle after miracle unfolded, ministers offered to, for me to stay with them. And Reverend Jay offered me the youth director position in Napa and just miracle after miracle after miracle. And it was so clear that I was being pulled to a greater vision and yes, the pain is there, but it's no longer shoving me along. Instead, I am two or three steps ahead of it and being called into that greater experience. And then back across, well, then we drove across the country again, and we went a different route. We actually, I have now driven across the country on 10, 40, and 80, and 40 again. <laughs> um, and we drove a different route, stunningly beautiful. And then I was with Jen and we were pulling over on the side of the road, just in awe of what this country had to offer. And then again on 80, stunningly beautiful. And that once you catch a glimpse of what being pulled by vision feels like, then it's easier and easier to see the pain coming and stay one or two steps ahead of it. Anais Nen, apparently I was very into her at 3 a.m., also said, life is a process of becoming, a combination of states we have to go through. Where people fail is that they wish to elect a state and remain in it. This is a kind of death. And that's where that wall of pain catches up to us is when we hit a state and we stay static and we say, this, oh, this is it. This is my ultimate state. I have reached perfection. And then all of a sudden here comes because that vision is pulling and all of a sudden we aren't reaching for it anymore. And so it gets more and more uncomfortable. It reminds me of Super Mario from the 80s. Anybody, anybody know Super Mario from the 80s? Sort of, yes, sort of. Um, in Super, that original Super Mario, the screen was always moving forward, always. And your little Super Mario guy, you had to play him and keep him ahead of that wall. And if he touched, there were a couple of different versions. I think in that original one, if he touched the wall, nothing happened, but he would get dragged along. And if you weren't paying attention, he'd get dragged into a, another wall and get squished or dragged into a hole or dragged into a bad guy who would eat him or blow him up or whatever. And that to me is what it's like. It's like where our lives are constantly moving forward. We are constantly being called to our next greatest, highest expression. And if we stop looking ahead to where we're going, that wall comes up and starts pushing us along. Ernest, Ernest Holmes, our founder, says, what does he say? To have your heart without fear is to have implicit confidence in the good, the enduring, and the true. Fear is the only thing of which to be afraid. It is not the host encamped against you, nor the confusion around you that you need to fear. It is the lack of confidence in the good alone which should concern you. Through inner spiritual vision, you know that good alone is permanent and all else is transitory. You know that the right finally dissolves everything opposed to it. The power of spirit is supreme. Therefore, you should cherish no fear, and you neither fear nor hate. You come to understand the unity of life. And so we're playing this game. We're playing this Super Mario game, and the screen is constantly moving ahead and moving forward, and we're constantly being pulled into our vision. And yet, through all of that, through all of that, the, the castle always exists. It might not be on the screen at the moment, but it's always there. It is always the castle in the Mario game. <laughs> Not the, not the physical castle in the sky that we're going to, but the castle in the Mar Mario game. It always exists. Our good always exists. So underlying this ever-changing form of being pulled by the vision, underlying all of that is life, is spirit, is love, is peace. It is abundance. It is all of the good, all of the fullness, all of the expression of the divine that is calling out to us, that is that which is pulling us to our vision. 
And so we are being pulled to our vision and we will be together in person in a week. And maybe not all of us, because I know I've talked to, I've talked to people one-on-one -on -one, and a lot of people are really excited. And I'm really excited to see you and to have you come back. And I'm so excited to have y'all here in the room. And some people aren't gonna be back in person. Y'all are gonna remain on our live streaming. You're gonna remain watching the service. And all of it is good because we aren't going back. We aren't going back to in-person services. We aren't reopening because we've been open this whole time and we have continued throughout the year to open and blossom and be pulled by our vision. And this transition to returning to have people in the room is just simply the next evolution of what is being called to us as we are pulled to our vision. And so whatever way you are going to show up here next week for our Sunday service, you are part of the beloved community. You are part of the way in which we are being called to our vision. And it is all so good. And it's going to look really different because we're not going to be on Zoom next week. We're going to be live streaming directly to our website. We're going to be live streaming directly to YouTube and directly to Facebook all at the same time. We're going to make it so easy for you to join online at home. If you're out on vacation, still come to church before you had an out, right? <laughs> but now you can come to church. You don't have to, but you can. And here in person, and so you, we do tell us, and we're gonna do tell us today. And since we are on Zoom, we'll be able to do tell us here in the room or here on Zoom for everyone. Zoom is over here for us. It's, it's probably over there for y'all there on Zoom. And next week for tell us, what's gonna be really exciting is if you are watching on one of those live stream platforms, specifically YouTube and Facebook, you can write in the chat your tell us. And then we can pop it up on the screen and read it aloud and see who it's from. So there will still be ways, even if you're not here in person, there will still be ways to connect with one another because we are always moving forward. We are always being, step, always being called into our vision. Always, always, always. And so my tell us question is, today is what vision are you being called to this morning? What vision are you being called to this morning? And if you are online, raise your hand. And if you're in the room, just stand up and I'll bring a microphone to you because we have that technology. What vision are you being called to today? Tapora, if you are talking, you are muted. Oh, I was actually just practicing the next song. <laughs> okay. Sorry. <laughs> it's all a bit distracting. <laughs> it's all good. Tapora is being called into the vision of her next song. <laughs> what are you being called to today? Terry. If you actually want to come up to the front, then you can be seen by people online. Uh, I feel like I'm being called to community. Uh, feeling us together again just makes me realize how important it is that we come together, whether it's physically or online. I've been thinking a lot about how the world's problems need to be solved by individuals in small groups mm. spreading outward. And so I'm just extra excited about us physically re reasserting uh, our contribution to the world. Mm. Thank you. Thank you, Terry. Who else? What are you being called to today? All right, Harrison. <laughs> Well, so beautiful what Terry said. I want to add to that, that um, there's such a beauty in coming together that I think that, that how we nurture each other mm -hmm. and uh, to take to really call to those moments of family, friends, uh, community and to receive and give 
that loving, nurturing presence really um, heals the past and the future. Mm. So thank you. Yeah, thank you. Irina? Well, I have a um, simple and a huge vis vision for myself. It's to be present. And uh, I had a chance to be present today. Mm. So thank you, Reverend Chris. Mm. Thank you, Irina. Uh, Richard, do you have a vision that you are being called to today? Hi. Uh, I don't know. Just enjoyed a beautiful day. Uh, I got a walk later, and uh, that's about it, I guess. I mm. <laughs> enjoy the uh, cookout I had last night. Mm -hmm. Come by for a while and celebrating my friend's birthday and so forth. It was really great. So Beautiful. From that. And the weather cooperated. Mm. <laughs> oh, excellent. Yeah, thank you, Richard. Living, living every day to the fullest is definitely being called into the vision. Oh, yeah. I wake up with, wow, what do I do now? Mm. Yes. So thank you, thank you. Oh, it's Hapora. <laughs> I really appreciate this uh, this uh, message, and it really moved me. So I wanted to thank you. Um, and I do think that I've been sort of ignoring my vision, um, mm. and I don't I don't really know why. Maybe just everything. It's just a mm. lot, you know. So the vision that I would like to start answering again, and that I've been working towards um, through education recently is um, I do empowerment work for women who, and girls who've gone through trauma. So I'm supposed to be writing a book <laughs> and doing a keynote speaker series. So I'm saying it right now that <laughs> here with all of you magical people <laughs> in this space that I'm renewing my commitment to that. And my vision is to create the time and the space to respond to that call, um, because that is why I'm here in one way or another. So, thank you. Thank you, Tapora. That's beautiful. Mm. And so that thank you, everyone. Thank you for your vision. And whatever your vision is, whether you spoke or not, you have a vision that is calling you forward. And I fully believe that the more that we can step out individually into our vision, the easier it becomes for us to collectively step forward into the vision of the center. And the more that, that we can do that collectively, then it spreads out into society. And all of a sudden, we're no longer being pushed by pain in our society and in our world, but instead we are being called collectively into the vision, that global vision of a world that works for everyone. And so breathing in that, knowing that that world that works for everyone is the vision that each of us is being called to, I invite you into prayer and I invite you to close your eyes. And what I know, what I know is that there is one, one power, one presence, one infinite, absolute, eternal thing, one life. And this one life, this one thing that is so big and so infinite and so present and so manifest, it is so big and so infinite that we cannot possibly fathom it. It is so magnificent that we simply step into it moment after moment, time after time, because it is all that there is to step into. We are the what we are what is being stepped into, and we are the ones doing the stepping. We are all of it. We are the totality of existence, the potentiality and the possibility of all of life wrapped up here as these divine human beings. Each and every one of us is the divine idea of expression. Each and every one of us is spirit's call to its own vision of what a human life can be, what a being on purpose can look like. Each and every one of us is that divine expression, that infinite absolute presence wrapped up and swirled up into these neat little packages. 
And so we are all of the peace, all of the love, all of the presence, all of the abundance, all of the joy, all of the bliss, all of the surrender, all of the beauty and the brilliance of God, all of it. And so knowing and affirming this to be true, I know that each and every one of us is on purpose. Each and every one of us is being called into our greatest vision. Each and every one of us is stepping forward and allowing us to be pulled into that highest expression for our lives. And as we are pulled into that highest expression of our lives, we are pulled into that global vision of a world that works for all. And we are showing up and we are stepping up and we are doing that here together in every interaction, every moment of beloved community. Whether that moment occurs through the internet or that moment occurs in person, it is all the beloved community showing up and stepping up as us. And I am so grateful for Celebration Center. I am so grateful for each and every person who is saying yes to their vision. I am so grateful for this amazing divine community that was birthed in vision and continues to take every step forward in vision. And so I simply release my word. I know that God takes it and does God stuff to it and makes it more magnificent, more incredible, more divine, more yes than anything I can possibly fathom. And so I just surrender into that. I trust, I trust the divine process. I trust the vision of spirit as I step forward into it with each and every person here as we all release and say together, and so it is. And so now I would like to invite Tapora Belazikian back for another song. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. I, uh, I have a complaint. <laughs> I just would love to see everybody who's sitting down too. I'm just like, oh, who is it? I want to see them. So it was awesome seeing people come up and talk. Cause I'm like, oh, I remember that human. <laughs> Look, she's gonna fix it. <laughs> Oh, there we go. Oh, and you yeah. shall receive. <laughs> yeah, hold on, hold on. Anybody know who Modest Yahoo is? All right. I had the incredible pleasure of seeing him um, perform at Love Light Festival a few years ago. Um, Love Light Festival is going on right now, actually, without the founder because um, he passed away suddenly um, this year after reopening and saying, Who wants to come? Let's make it smaller. Let's make this safe. He opened the tickets and then he had a heart attack in a car accident and died like a week after that. And it was like one of those fiery moments in time. And um, so whenever I play this song, I think of him and anyone um, who we've lost along the way. And this is a beautiful, beautiful song called One Day. I changed the words to today because signs of mind. <laughs> so anyways, One Day by Madis Yahoo. Sometimes I lay under the moon and thank God I am breathing Then I pray don't take me too soon Cause I am here for a reason Sometimes in my tears I drown But I never let it get me down So when negativity surrounds I know someday it'll all turn around All my life I've been waiting for I've been praying for, for the people to see That we don't need to fight no more There'll be no more wars and the children will play One day, one day, one day One day 
not about win or lose Cause we all lose when they feed on the souls of the innocent blood drench pavement Keep on moving though the water stay raging In this maze you can lose your way Your way <clears throat> And it might drive you crazy but don't let it phase you No way, no way Sometimes in my tears I drown But I never let it get me down So when negativity surrounds I know someday it'll all turn around All my life I've been waiting for I've been praying for For the people to say That we don't wanna fight no more No more wars and the children <laughs> Thank you so much, Tapora. I love that song and I love Modest Yahoo as well. So thank you very much. And talk about a um, being called into a vision and completing that is what is yours to do and then stepping into the next greater vision. So this is the time in our service for our prayer requests and our giving. We are not passing the basket here today at the center, um, but... There are so many amazing ways that you can give to the center. Um, there, if you go to our website, celebrationcenter.org, it's over here, <laughs> celebrationcenter.org, and you click on give, you'll be taken to our uh, Breeze Church Management software that, um, that will allow you to donate through a very secure site. You can also um, mail in your checks. You can, um, we can still tie through PayPal, although that is ending slowly. And of course, we will accept any forms of giving. And so I just invite you uh, to take all of that, all of your love, all of your ties, all of your offerings, and just wrap it up and bring it to your heart. And we are going to say our offertory affirmation together. Yes, we are. <laughs> if y'all can read that. <laughs> I open my heart to give and receive the blessings that our spirits promise to me. And as I do, the entire universe conspires to give me an abundant life and I open to accept it. And so it is. And something else that we do at this time is we talk about our prayers. So our practitioners, our prayer practitioners love to pray, and I love to pray as well. And so if there is something that you are creating in your life, if there is something you are uncreating in your life, if you are working on new beliefs, new habits, new systems, new ways of being, new ways to be pulled into your vision, there are a couple of different ways that you can submit prayer requests to us. You can do that on our website, celebrationcenter.org. Again, you saw that header there for a second, and if you go to our website, website. It's okay, Ivor, don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> if you go to our website, you can see request affirmative prayer, and that goes straight to our practitioners and myself, where we pray for you confidential, confidentially. Or you can also email us at prayer at celebrationcenter.org. And we are, I don't know what that means. The laptop doesn't have sound attached to it. <laughs> uh, um, we are happy to pray with you. 
We are blessed to pray with you. And you can also contact our practitioners if you're interested in talking one-on-one -on -one with, one, with them. They are, there's a box you can check on that request affirmative prayer form and they will return your call and um, pray with you in person, one -on, well, in person over the phone, one-on-one. -on -one. And so now, Tapora, do you have an offering song for us? For us? This is a song by Ricky Byers uh, Beckwith called I Trust in God, and it's about surrender and just being one with the space that we're all in in these moments. I'm sorry I have a frog in my throat today. <laughs> I'm asking him to leave. <laughs> I'm thankful, so grateful. I am one in the spirit all around me. I'm thankful, so grateful. I trust in God. I'm thankful, so grateful. I am one in the spirit all around me. I'm thankful, so grateful. I trust in God. For your generosity of heart and spirit with the Center for Spiritual Living Falls Church. What a wonderful organization. And at this time, I invite us all to bless the prayer requests that are already written or will be written soon. And we just recognize that the word spoken is a prayer. If it is spoken with love, with passion, if there is desire and vision behind it. So I know that all the prayer requests are answered in the perfect mind of God. And I know that dreams are fulfilled. I know that there are lots of visions that come true right here, right now. And the new visions are popping up. And it is a wonderful process. And I know abundance flowing through the celebration center. I know that prosperity and abundance is the essence of this place. And money is coming easily and effortlessly, as we used to see in that. I know that this place is absolutely blooming 
Look how beautiful it is today. These curtains, they're just magnificent. And I bless the source, the resources that bought it. And I know that there is only one source and everyone who gives is one and inseparable from it. I know that the law of circulation works perfectly fine and it all multiplies and comes back to all of us. I'm just grateful to know it and I let it be. And so it is. So it is. Oh, Aries, I don't need that. You're good. Oh. Actually, it's not Harrison, it's Terry. Uh, am I unmuted, Ivor? <laughs> All right, and now I would like to invite Terry Murphy up for announcements. There's really only one piece of news today, and you've heard it highlighted. It's that next week we are back right here for the 4th of July. It's, it, it might be a little tense with the transitions. Most of us are not used to being together, so we're gonna put several protocols in place so that everybody feels comfortable. First of all, we are requiring masks, and if you forget your mask, we have some really adorable masks for you. Wait till you see how cute they are. Uh, second, we're gonna ask you to be mindful about hugging. Please ask somebody, is it okay if I hug you? Do you mind if I hug you? Before you give them a big hug. We, we do have some people with uh, immune, situation so please don't take for granted how physically close people might feel uh also we will not be meeting on zoom this is the last time that you can find us via the blue zoom button on the website we'll be changing those buttons that where are the three places you can find us if you're not here in person our youtube our facebook or right on the website there will be a place that you can watch directly on the website itself so watch for changes about that also, for the time being, we won't be having any food or drinks in the sanctuary itself, but next week we are going outside afterwards. We'll have some refreshments outside under a tent because we know it might be a little hot, but bring your own share and hang out with us after the service. Uh, if you want all the details, there's a link in the chat from Reverend Chris uh, uh, and the Leadership Council that uh, goes over all of this. And last of all, it's gonna take a lot of folks to make this happen. We really need as many hands as we can get. Ivor and Reverend Chris have done so much of the work, but next week there'll be chair moving and tent putting up and, and stuff ongoing uh, ushers that we need. So please uh, call and say, yes, I can help. Uh, and Reverend Chris will put her contact in the chat so you can do that. And uh, so that's the big news. Otherwise, all of our regular events continue ongoing. You'll be able to see them on our website. Just one small change. Normally, our chanting is on the first Saturday evening of the month, our evening chanting. And we will, we're not going to hold that in July because it would be the night of 4th of July and the night before the big party here. We're going we're gonna to give ourselves a month off. See you back in August for evening chanting. All right. Thank you so much, Terry. We are so excited to be welcoming everybody um, to Height Hall next week. And thank you for that update of all of the protocols. Y'all can see that we've been having masks. We take them off just to come up here um, because we're kind of back from the audience a little bit. And we are going to have a row of socially distanced seats in the very back. So if you do want to come and you want to stay six feet apart, that opportunity is available for you here. Um, and so we hope and know that all of the perfect right people will be here with us next week. And um, Tapora, we would like to invite you back for one final closing song. Wonderful. It's been so fantastic to be with everyone here today and to meet you. This is another Ricky Byer song. I know nobody minds if I play two Ricky Byer songs. <laughs> <laughs> what a beautiful soul she is. So this is called Spirit of God. I love to um, bring this in at the end to uh, remind ourselves that we are in the spirit right now. We're all feeling it, We're feeling the blessings and the magic of all of the wonderful work that was done today.
I love cause I want to Now I love cause I'm free Blinded by the Spirit Oh, the Spirit of God is upon me Thank you so much to Pora. And if you would like, if you have a website or a Instagram or a Facebook, go ahead and drop that in the chat for us. Well, thank you for that. <laughs> yes, so we can find you. And now I just send us out into the world, being pulled by our vision as this beloved community coming together, some of us in person, some of us online, knowing that everything every way that we are showing up together is truly our calling into the vision of the next highest step for each and every one of us and so we say bye to our facebook people